right, guys. So today we're going to talk about, oh, sorry, rational exponents. And we're going to simplify them and figure out what to do with our cute little exponents. Um, yeah, that's what we're doing. Okay, so let's look at number one. On number one, um, we have 3x to the 1 half power. So here's the deal. Um, when you have an exponent that's a fraction, um, your numerator, the top number, this guy is um, like your multiplying part. Um, and how many? And then the bottom number, the denominator, is um, your number on your roots shelf. Okay, so that's what you need to know from the very, very get-go. Okay, so... Um, <laughs> Let's do an example. <laughs> okay, the top number is going to be how many times you want this. Um, let's zoom in a little. Okay, and the bottom number is your root. Maybe like this would help too. All right, look at that. Okay, so to the first power is not going to change it, so I'm going to keep my 3x, and then this number is the number that goes on your shelf, so a 2. Well, the square root of 3x is just the square root of 3x. So there we go. We're all done. So we're, retake, we're taking these um, exponents that are fractions apart, and we're putting them into roots. Um, and it doesn't say simplify, so we're just write, writing in, them in radical form. Okay, so um, for the next part, this guy, you can write them two different ways, and I'll show you. So this is, I want 5 of those guys. So I want five of them. Um, and then I want to put this number on my shelf. So like that. Or you could do that first and then this. Either way is fine. Um, just it's sometimes easier to um, do the exponent first and then take the square root but then you're working with bigger numbers. If you take the square root first and then the exponent, you're working with smaller numbers. So just be careful and then pick if you want big numbers or small numbers. We're going to do more examples and you'll see what I'm talking about. Uh, the next section, I want you to write these in exponential form. So um, let's look at number 7. We have a 5 here, so that number is going to go on the top of my fraction. And since I have a root with a no number, it's got a 2 on the shelf, so then the 2 goes there. The only thing I have inside of my root is my m, so this and this are equal. Those expressions are equal, so that's all you have to do. On something more complicated, like uh, number 6, see how there are two things inside of my root symbol? We have to be careful about how we write this. So my top number is the exponent. I know they're both exponent. Well, I guess it's not. So we'll just write that then. Multiplying, exponent. I just don't want you to get confused with like, well, that's an exponent, but this is an exponent, but that's an exponent. Like, that's why I was saying the multiply by how many. But yes, it's technically called an exponent. So the 5 is the top part of your exponent, and then the number that sits on your shelf is the bottom part of your exponent. And now here's where you have to be careful. If you're typing this somewhere, you have to include both items in parentheses because if you just write it like this, even if you're writing it down, okay, this problem says I want all of 7x to be to the 5 third power, which it is because both numbers are underneath the root and both numbers have an exponent. This says I want to multiply by 7 and then I want to take the cube root of x but I also want to multiply that by 5. So this problem right here ends up being a lot different than when we originally started from. So you have to make sure you're using these parentheses. They help show what we're talking about. We're really talking about this guy 
and that guy, okay? So just be careful. So speaking of that, let's go to number nine. I just, just kidding, number nine. Okay, so if we remember our rules of exponents, when you have the power of power, so this exponent on the outside, you have to distribute it to everything on the inside. So to 64 and b to the sixth. So I want, I really want 64 to the one half power times b to the six times a one half power. So you multiply those exponents if you already had an exponent there, if you're doing power of powers. Okay, so 64 to the 1 half power is the same thing as the square root of 64 because my 2 will go on my shelf and I want 1 64. Um, so that is 8. The other way to do it on your calculator is to type in this exponent. So you would type in 64 and then this would be to the 1 half. And if both of your numbers are tiny, then it's in the exponent. So if you press enter, then you'll get 8. Sometimes on different calculators, it won't be included, this 2 won't be included. So, oops, so you have to make sure that you put parentheses around them in certain calculators to make sure that we're including this 2. It's not just like this. So some calculators like to do this. Like that. So if it gets large, notice it's not an exponent anymore, you're going to get a very different answer because it did 64 to the 1 power, which is 64, and then it divided by 2. So just make sure that if you're typing in an exponent and it's a fraction, that both numbers are little, and if your calculator does this, then you better use parentheses. So be careful. Okay, so 8, so I checked my answer, and then here, 6 divided by 2 because this is really 6 times 1 half which is really 6 over 2 because our fraction rules say if you're multiplying two fractions you multiply straight across so multiply 6 times 1 and get 6 multiply 1 times 2 and get 2 um, I got a 1 because any number can be put over 1 and it's totally fine um, 6 divided by 2 is 3 so this is really b to the third since b3 is a positive exponent we can leave it alone now, if you were like, what did you do? It was magical. Okay, you can do something different if you want to. Remember, this is six Bs, but I want the square root because my two would be on my shelf of one, two, three, four, five, six Bs. So remember, we want pairs because my two's on my shelf. So one pair, two pair, three pairs. One goes out, the other goes away. One goes out, the other goes away. One goes out, the other goes away. So I really have one, two, three Bs left. So that would be B to the third. So look, I got the same answer, whether I reduced my fractions or whether I actually did what it asked me to do. The same thing happened over here with my eight. If you just type it in, you'll get the correct answer, but just be very, very careful with your exponents. So let's do more of these because um, we should practice a few more times so we know we've got it. Uh, let's look at number 13. Okay, so again, we have to distribute this 3 to the set, 3 over 2 to the k and the 16. So we really have 16 to the 3 over 2nd power times k, and this is 6 times 3 over 2. So you can do our fraction rules, which is totally fine, um, and go from there. So we have 6 over 1, really, times 3 over 2. Well, 6 times 3. 18, 1 times 2, 2, <laughs> and 18 divided by 2 is 9. Um, then let's type in the 16 in here and see if we get a nice number. If we don't, we'll just have to do uh, what we did yesterday. So 16 to the 3 over 2nd is 64. Fantastic. Okay, so we're going to have 64k to the 9th. Again, there are other ways that you can do this, and on my answer key, I did it a little differently. So let me show you what I did. I know it's hard to read with all of the other business going on. Okay, so this is what I did. Um, I broke my 16 up, so I know the 3 goes to the 16 and the 3 goes to the K. So I have 6 times 3, which is 18, and then 16 to the 3rd is 4,096. Then I took the square root because it's to the 1 half power of 4,096, and I got 64. And then I broke my 18 into two identical pieces because it's a square root. And I know that if I have two identical pieces, I can take one out and the other goes away. So then I got 64k to the ninth. 
Or you could do it like this. I started with taking the square root because I know 16 is a perfect square, so that would be 4. And then I took the square root of 6. Well, if I've got 6 k's underneath, then I can take out a pair and cross one off, take out a pair and cross one off, and then left over with 3. I still have to cube them, though, because I had that cute little exponent. So 4 cubed is 64, and 3 times 3 is 9. So you just saw that one problem done three different ways. Honestly, it doesn't matter which way you pick as long as, um, as long as you are showing your work, it's totally fine. This way is probably the quickest, but you know, if the other way helps you understand, that's fine too. Okay, let's look at 17. So we have a little bit more going on, which is fine. We're just going to use more of our exponent rules. So we keep our y to the 1 half out in front and we need to distribute this one-third to the x and the y. So remember, it's 2 over 1 times 1 over 3, and we multiply straight across. So 2 times 1 is 2, and 1 times 3 is 3. If you get confused and you're like, man, again, with the wizardry, I don't know how you math so well. Okay, just type it in your calculator. You're multiplying 2 times... 1 over 3. And the reason that I use this fraction piece is because I want my answer in a fraction. And if I don't put a fraction there, sometimes my calculator will give me decimals. In any event, it's 2 thirds, which is what we got. If you get a decimal, you can press this like button here. So see this F to D? That's where you're looking for on your calculator. Or like mine has these like arrows and these squigglies. So this is my magic button. If I press this button, which I'm going to press right now, you can't just like see all of it then it's going to change this into a decimal. So we don't want any decimals, we want to keep fractions. I know you don't love them, but it's okay. So this will be x to the 2 thirds and y to the 2 thirds. And now we have some like terms, so our y's, so we need to combine them. When the bases are the same, we need to add the exponents. Again, adding fraction rules. We can only add fractions when the denominators are the same. So I want a denominator to match here and here. Well, to get a common denominator, I need to multiply by 2 over 2 on this side, basically by 1, and by 3 over 3 on this side. These are just baby fraction rules, and if you don't remember them, just sit tight. So I multiply on the top, 3 times 1 is 3, 3 times 2 is 6. Multiply on the top again, 2 and 2 is 4, and 3 and 2 is 6. Then I have the same common denominator, so I can add the top part of my fractions to 7, and the denominator stays. Again, if you're like, oh man, look at that magic. It's just fraction rules, but it's been a long time, so I totally understand you forgetting. Um, I'm not testing you on your fraction abilities, so please feel free to use the calculator. I just want you to understand what's happening. So we're doing 1 half and 2 thirds. Again, you can type it with the divided by symbol instead of making it a fraction if that's the way your calculator is, but then your answer might be turned into a decimal and we don't want a decimal. And then look, seven six. I mean, it took the calculator far less time than it took me, but I still ended up with the same answer. So that's exciting. Okay, so then instead of y to the one half and y to the two thirds, we added those exponents because our bases are getting multiplied. This is different because we have a power of power. So it's y to the seven six, x to the 2 thirds, and that's our answer. It doesn't matter if you write your y or your x first, um, and you don't need a multiply sign in between them, but um, make sure that they're positive exponents. And then let's do one more. Oh, let's do, we're going to do number 18. It's really similar to number 17, but um, we don't have like just a number. They're a fraction and a fraction which looks really scary, but again, it's fine. Keep your cute little y out in front. Nothing's happening to that. Distribute this 1 fourth to the x and the y. So it'll be y to the 1 fourth and then x. Remember, when it's power of powers, we multiply because it almost looks like an x in between these guys. We used to use x's for multiplication. Anyways, that's how I tell students to remember that we're multiplying. So we're multiplying 2 over 3 times 1 over 4. Again, you can put this in your calculator or remember your fraction rules. Multiply straight across. 2 over 12. And if you want to, you could reduce it, which I suggest because I can't combine the x with anything else. So 1 6. And again, you can always use your calculator. Um, then I need to add my cute little fractions. Remember, if there's no number here, it's got a 1. So I'm adding 1 and 1 4th. If I'm adding 1 and 1 4th, 
We should think about what the answer is, but I will do all the math for you so you can see. If you have a whole number, you're going to put a 1 underneath it. Then I want the common denominator, so I'm going to multiply by 1 on this side, really. And then on this side, I'm multiplying by this number, so 4 over 4, because we're also multiplying by 1. So that means I've got 4 fourths and 1 fourth. Add straight across, keep the bottom denominator the same, so 4 and 1 make 5 fourths. Because 1 whole of 1 is 4 over 4, and I'm adding a fourth more, so I have now 5 fourths instead of just 4 fourths. Anyways, so, um, oh, I forgot to put my cute little 1 6 by my x. Sad. Um, my y's combine together, and I have y to the 5 fourth, and then I have my x to the 1 6. Oh, sorry, you don't have to have a multiply sign if you don't want to. Um, I don't know why I just drew one. You could also write it the opposite way if you're like, oh, we should go in alphabetical order. Sure, that sounds fine. Whatever you love. Okay, um, let me know if you have any more questions. Hope that you have a fantastic day. Bye, guys.